In this video, we're gonna build the best budget 1080p and 4040p gaming PC that you can put together in 2021. I'm going to run you guys through the entire build process from start to finish. And then, yeah, we're gonna fire this thing up and believe it or not, we actually gonna game on it. Now, all PC components you see in this video are linked up in the video description down below. With that said guys, let's go ahead and start with the build and I like to start all my PC builds with the motherboard. Now currently sitting at $70, the Gigabyte B450M is one of the best budget micro ATX motherboard for the Ryzen platform. With support for Ryzen 5000, you can easily slot in a 5th gen Ryzen, let's say a 5600, later down the road if you feel like you need more power. Now before installing the CPU, let's go ahead and get rid of these two uh, placeholders. Now it is finally time to unbox the CPU. And this is the Ryzen 3 3100. This is a 4 core 8 thread CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock and 3.9 GHz boost clock. Now, included in the box is obviously also the cooler, which we are gonna use for today's PC build. Despite its lower clock speed and core count, the 3100 is still holding up great when gaming, making the $99 the perfect CPU for this ultra low budget gaming PC build. To install the CPU, all we need to do is to match up the triangle located at the lower left side corner of the CPU with this triangle or circle we find on the motherboard socket. Lift up the lever, line up the triangles, then gently place the CPU in its socket just like so. Then lower the lever and the CPU is installed. Next up, let's go ahead and get the CPU cooler ready for installation. And the installment process is easy and pretty straightforward. Make sure that the four spring screws align with the screw holes on the back plate, then carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern like so until you feel resistance. Then take the CPU fan cable, and this should be plugged into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And we find this at the top corner of the motherboard. Next up is going to be RAM. And this is one of the most popular DDR4 RAM kits out there right now. It is called Vengeance LPX and it's coming from Corsair. This is a 2x8GB kit clocked at 3200MHz. And it is packed in a nice red heatsink finish. Now this kit is currently selling for $88. You can however save a few dollars here if you decide to go for these from Team Group. And these are about $10 less. Anyway, both kits are linked up down below. Next up is going to be the SSD. And the part you're gonna need for this step is 1. The M.2 screw. And this one we find inside the motherboard box. And we also need the M.2 unit. This is from Kingston. It's called A2000. And this is a high quality and budget friendly M.2 SSD that I've been using for most of my PC builds with great success. Now the SSD easily slides into its socket and will be fastened into place using the M.2 screw. Let's go ahead and prepare our case. This is the Eclipse P360A from Fantex, a $80 mid-tower budget high airflow case that is rocking a super clean white design with two RGB fans at the front that you can customize thanks to the RGB button that we find in front of the case. Now, Quality-wise, Fantex always delivers. Their cases are also very easy to work with, making their case is very easy to recommend in my opinion, especially for any new PC builder out there. So now it is time to take off the glass panel of the case and we do this by unscrewing the thumb screws on the back of the case. Before we install the motherboard, don't forget the motherboard IO shield. This one goes in from the inside of the case. 
with these audio ports pointing towards the bottom of the case. Install this first and then we can go ahead and secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by Fantix. Now we're almost ready guys to install our power supply but before we do that let's go ahead and install the case cables for the power button and the other front IO so that we don't have to worry about that stuff later. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to the front audio, this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, we have the front panel connector and we find this on the lower right side of the board. So let's grab the power supply and make sure that the fan is facing downwards. Gently slide it into place and secure it. Now we're just gonna do a few more cables guys before it is time to install our graphics. First up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to the right hand side of the board. Next up we got the 8 pin power and this is for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner of the case. And lastly we also need a SATA power connector and that is so that we can control the ARGB controller. Now it is finally time, the part you've been waiting to hear about, I'm obviously talking about the graphics card. Now this here is the GeForce GTX 1660 from Asus using the dual cooler with a nice sleek backplate. Now the 1660 comes with 6GB of G5 memory on a 192-bit wide bus and it's a 1080p beast of a graphics card. Now thanks to the 1660 only consuming about 130 watts of power, the graphics card is perfect for smaller and cheaper PC builds with limited air ventilation. Having a quick look at the 1660 performance then again similarly priced competitors, we see that the 1660 GPU is holding up great. And if we take a deeper look at the 18 game benchmark, there is no doubt about the fact that the 1660 runs any game outer with lots of detail with great frame rate in 2021. Let's say whoever that you got the 1440p gaming monitored, well it turns out that the 1660 handles this resolution pretty okay as well, as can be seen. The only slight disappointment right now is obviously availability and pricing. The situation is whoever looking better and brighter every day. Anyway, plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics. And that is it, slap on the side panel and let's fire up the PC and let's take a greater look at some of the games tested at a deeper level. Now before we do that, here's what the final part list is looking like. Now assuming that the GPU prices keep falling, you should be able to pick up all parts for around $650 to $670. And this is definitely one of the better priced performance gaming PCs out there right now. Let's look at some gaming then and let's kick it off by having a look at Rust. Let's start having a look at the settings. And starting with 1080p, here I'm putting the graphics preset to 3 and this gives us a frame rate of 75. Now at 1440p, we're looking at an average frame rate of 54. Let's move on to Days Gone, we're starting things with 1080p where I'm settling for the highest settings in the game and this gives us a frame rate of 62 on average and about 52 fps at 1% low. Bumping the resolution to 1440p and you can expect similar numbers as before, we're looking at about 49 to 50 fps and 1% low at about 38. 
Next up is Call of Duty Warzone and here I'm selecting medium graphics. Starting at 1080p you can expect as much as 91 FPS, whereas in 440p you will see around 61 frames on average. Death Stranding is up next and as you guys can see we're putting everything at max and this gives us almost 78 FPS at 1080p. At 1440p you can expect as much as 58 FPS with this PC. Let's move on to Biomutant. Starting with 1080p, yet again we're seeing fairly high numbers here. To be more specific we're looking at 82 FPS at 1080p and about 54 FPS at 1440p. Looking at the settings, you guys can see that I'm going for high settings here. Let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here I'm going for medium settings. 1080p runs great, almost 60 FPS. At 1440p, however, I recommend lower the settings a bit in order to achieve, you know, that silky smooth 60 FPS frame count. Moving on to control, and if you want to play the game with respectable frame rate, I recommend that you settle for 1080p and here you can expect around 74 FPS. At 1440p using the same settings we're looking at around 45 FPS. If you want to go ahead and install the RGB LED strip this is totally optional but if you want to do that here's how you do it. So you simply want to take the included 4 pin RGB cable and plug it into the RGB header located down at the left side of the CPU cooler then connect the first LED strip into the 4 pin cable. Now thanks to the LED strips having magnets you can move them around the case as much as you want until you found the spot you like. I ended up putting one at the roof and another one on the side. Once the LED strip's been installed, download Gigabyte RGB Fusion to customize the coloring. There are seven color profiles to choose from in total. Again, all PC components can be found down below. Now, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop it down below. And I'll try my best to get back to you as fast as possible. Now, watch either of these two videos, and I will see you guys in the next video.